I like my women like I like my Telecaster necks. Fuck. <laughs> So these are the top 10 essential tips for buying one of these bad boys right here, Telecaster. Caster. Now, I have built a couple Telecasters. I've bought a bunch of Telecasters. This video is definitely coming from experience and, of course, passion about this particular guitar. So, without further ado, the first one is traditional or modern. So this is going to kind of establish what direction you're going to go. So this is more of a traditional kind of setup. Although you can go a mix between the two. For example, right, this is traditional setup, how I would consider that, with two single coils and a maple neck. But this is roasted maple neck, which is more of a modern feature. I have, I don't know if you can kind of see that on camera, but I have locking tuners which is definitely more of a modern feature. And while these are two single coils, these are the Fishman Gristletone Greg Cox signature pickups that are active, which would be more uh, of a modern feature. They're active at home canceling uh, as well. So you can kind of go traditional, modern, or you know, a mix between the two, and that's gonna narrow down your search for your ultimate Telecaster. So, the rest, 2 through 10, are going to go from order of least important to most important. So stick around to the end of the video to get that, that key tip that is really going to make your Telecaster experience something really awesome. So number two is body woods. Now, you can go mahogany, alder, ash, and uh, pine. I think percentage wise it doesn't contribute a ton to the tone i do think there is something to how the wood resonates and feeds back through the pickups depending on what type of pickups you're using but it is going to contribute to the look but also it's going to contribute to what's next number three is the weight so i don't think weight is super important if you're kind of just playing at home or playing in the studio and just sitting down all the time but when you're you're at a three to four hour gig there's a difference between a seven pound guitar and a nine pound guitar so pine is going to be the lightest but also the moisture content of the wood is really going to determine the weight so you can have light ash you can have heavy ash you can have light alder and heavy alder, although alder seems to be a little bit lighter. It depends on what you're doing with the guitar, how important that is to you. Which brings us to, to number four, which is the looks. Does it inspire you to pick it up? So I tend to like a more traditional aesthetic with a telly, with some little fun variations. Like on this one, I got the cream with the faux tortoiseshell pickguard. But my custom shop is a is a black guard, one of the first Telecasters, and I love the black guard, you know, butterscotch bomb black guard. I, just, I love those. So I, I do think looks uh, are important. And if you're a gigging musician and you're on stage, you may have a look that you're trying to achieve. And again, that's where modern traditional comes in. Next, number five, is the fretboard material and finish. So fretboard material slash finish because while I love a maple neck of the feel of a maple neck it really depends on the finish sometimes you have those super lacquered fretboards which is not something that I gravitate to but you might like the feel of that if that's really subjective based on how much you bend or what kind of you know feeling you're looking for on the fretboard so at that point, I would tend to go towards a Palfaro or Rosewood fretboard if those were the options in my in my price point. Now, with my custom shop, that's that is obviously a, a aged neck, so the lacquer's kind of worn off, and it feels real great. And so, with this roasted maple neck, just has a real light satin finish, 
and the same on the fretboard feels really great. I think everything affects the sound to a certain degree, but fretboards for me are mostly about the feel of it. So, the next thing is, number six, is the body carve. Do you want a slab body like this? Just a straight up, there's no, no kind of carve to it, it's just a slab of wood? Or do you want something that has a carve to it? Whether it's a decorative kind of violin carve, which there's, there's some tellies out there that have, or if you want like the belly carve and the arm carve for comfort. And so some of the violin carves can be a little more comfortable than a slab. Although to me, the way I hold a guitar, the arm carve is nice, but I found it not necessary because this feels plenty comfortable to me with just a slab body and that's something you have to pick the guitar up play it and find out what's comfortable for you so the more modern guitars are going to have the more more carves and stuff like that and the traditionals are going to be a little bit more slab body and obviously the more carving you do the more money you're going to have to shell out for that instrument so Number seven, we're talking about tone, and that's the pickup configuration. So, again, are you more modern in the sense that you want two humbuckers? A lot of times you'll see a humbucker here in the neck and a single coil in the bridge or stack. There, there's a million different configurations. I'd spend all day if I went through every one of them, but what configuration is going to work for you and that's going to depend on the amp that you're playing into or the amp sim that you're using and what styles of music you play are you metal hard rock are you classic rock blues are you a country player and i would say that obviously the higher gain you go you want a humbucker generally you want humbuckers or something that's noiseless, just because you're gonna have a lot of noise whenever you pump gain up. So the least amount of noise that can come from your guitar, the better. But maybe if you're playing lower gain or even mid gain, that little bit of noise isn't that important. But if you like traditional, but you want noiseless pickups, uh, I love these Fishmans, uh, but Fender has noiseless pickups. Seymour Duncan's got noiseless pickups. A bunch of people do. You. That's, that sound great. And if you're gigging, you may want to go with a noiseless option because <laughs> just <laughs> depending on, like I I have a, a small power conditioner with me because you just, you never know when you go to the venue what kind of power you're getting from that outlet. So having some kind of conditioner helps, but you don't know kind of what's going on with RF signals and stuff and, and a single coil Guitar can be dangerous sometimes. I mean, listen, plenty of guys gig single coils all the time. But I, again, I chose these hum canceling Fishmans for that. So those are some things to consider when you're talking about pickups because that's super important. But if you're going to be at home and you got decent power and it's like stuff's not crazy, like, like here in my house, I can play single coils all the time. It's not a big deal here. So now we're going to circle back into feel and that is number eight is your neck profile. So your shape and thickness. Both of these are very important. And so I joked at the beginning about a thick neck, but I do like a neck with a little bit of girth to it, but I like a, a, a C shape or a soft V. My custom shop has a soft V. It's, it's, it's the greatest neck on a guitar I've ever played, um, which is why it was worth the money uh, that I spent on it. Uh, but this, this is kind of a, a, a deep C on here that I like, but maybe you don't like thicker necks. Well, maybe you like thinner necks. Well, the beauty of a telly is it's a bolt-on neck. So number one, you, you can call up Warm Off or you can go on Reverb and order a neck however you want it. So even if you bought a guitar and didn't love the neck, you could change that out. Narrow your search down that way, whether you like thinner or thicker necks. And one, But one thing I want to say about thicker necks is the shape means a lot. 
Same thing with thinner necks. But don't write off thick necks, like, off the bat. As this is another thing that you have to put your hands on the guitar. I definitely recommend putting your hands on the guitar. The neck is maybe the most important part of the guitar as far as the feel and comfort of a guitar goes. We're at number nine. We're almost the number 10. Number nine is <laughs> price. When it comes down to it, we can find the perfect guitar. But if we can't afford it, you know, and stuff's not getting any cheaper. You want to narrow your, your, your search into a price point that you can comfortably afford to pay. And the most important tip, this is it, man. This is the most important tip to buying a Telecaster is get a setup. There is nothing more important to your guitar experience than having a properly set up guitar. Because if you can't keep the thing in tune, if your nuts messed up, if your bridge is out, ah, it still drive you nuts, man. And tuning stability. Telecasters are great for tuning stability. Now, with the barrel saddles, right, sometimes intonation can be, you got to kind of split the difference on some of that stuff. Compensated saddles help. So I definitely recommend compensated saddles if you're going to go super traditional. Obviously, your more modern guitars are going to have six individual saddles, so you're going to get great intonation. But a big part of that is the setup. Now, when you're buying more expensive guitars, oftentimes places will throw a setup in for free. Or they'll set up to your uh, make adjustments to your parameters, but obviously I expect a little bit more out of a more expensive guitar. With some of these more affordable guitars, or if you're buying a guitar off of Amazon, it is definitely worth the sixty to hundred dollars. And I know if you're if you're spending two hundred dollars on a guitar to spend another seventy dollars, sixty, seventy, eighty dollars to get a setup is a little bit, but it is worth it. Of course, the other thing about setup is YouTube and go search about how to set up the Telecaster. And you can do it yourself. I mean, a few a few basic tools that might cost you 20 bucks off of Amazon and you can learn how to maintain your guitar and keep it set up is, is another thing that's, that's great to do. So with that, those are my 10 essential tips to buying a Telecaster. So, thank you very much for watching. If you made it to the end, you are a legend. Be, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment. If there's something I missed, like if there's a, a tip that you have when it comes to telecasters you'd like to share, all ears, man, put it, put it down in the comments below. And remember, it's always about the song. Peace.